I have journeyed to Ottawa today to speak on behalf of the many, many veterans and their families who will be adversely affected by the Canadian government's austerity-based programs to Veterans Affairs Canada's budget. Madame Picard spoke of a family's concerns about the quality of care of a cherished elder, one of almost 400 World War II and Korean veterans who currently reside at St. Anne's de Bellevue in Montreal. The care of these veterans, Canadians who fought at Dieppe, Ortona, at Juneau Beach, those who sacrificed greatly at Capion, Chai Lee, Little Gibraltar, Koan Song, and Hill 187, will soon be abandoned in an austerity-based scheme that will see the federal government abrogate their responsibility for Canada's most vulnerable veterans without ensuring that the center of excellence standard established by Veterans Affairs Canada's so-called bloated and inefficient bureaucracy will be maintained once the transfer is passed. These venerable World War II and Korean era veterans are not alone. The cries of veterans who have served in the killing fields of Rwanda, who have borne witness to the horrific genocidal terror of former Yugoslavia, who experienced the harsh, bloody reality of Afghanistan, where over 150 of Canada's finest have been sacrificed and thousands of wounded. Their voices, their cries are not being heard. Why is this government so unwilling to provide Canadian veterans the services they deserve in a prompt and efficient manner? Why are vet caseworkers overburdened between nine and 1,200 case files? Clients, many whom are suffering from complex war-related disabilities. Why does it still take months for veterans to receive benefits that should only take weeks? Why have the waiting times for care, treatment, and compensation not decreased? And why, why are Canadian veterans dying dying while they're waiting for services to be supported. In 2010 and 2011, Veterans Affairs Canada attained a mere 50% of the service standards they had hoped to attain. 50%. Does this sound like a department that can sustain another further quarter of a billion dollars in austerity-based reductions? Or does it sound like a de department already ravaged by budget restraints, a department already incapable of providing adequate services to those who have suffered the consequences of war and peace, a department that surely needs more, not less, financial support for our government. Lest we forget, never. Our veterans need Canadians' help here today than they have ever in our history's entire existence. And I would encourage all Canadians who treasure the liberties that they now enjoy, the freedoms earned through blood, toil, and great sacrifice by so many generations of patriotic Canadians to stand up. Stand up for those who have saved your homes and families from flood, forest fire, blizzard, and ice storm, from threats at home and abroad, and in time of war, defended this nation's very bloody existence. Your voice can make a profound difference in a disabled veteran's life. But only, only if you join us in sending a message to our government, a message insisting that Canada's wounded warriors, our disabled RCMP, police service and military veterans, be excluded, excluded, from the government's austerity programs and that the sacred obligation to those we have sent to war and peace is embraced, not ignored. Now, now is the time for all Canadians to stand on guard for those who have, with courage, dignity and valor, stood on guard for you. Thank you.